Good morning, everyone. Hope you've enjoyed looking at some of the pictures that Esther took last week at our first meeting everybody together and our Thanksgiving service really for David as he uh, leaves as our minister. Uh, we all had a, a great time and uh, as a result what we're hoping to do, this is the first notice by the way, uh, what we're hoping to do is to enable everyone whoever wants to to be able to join in a similar gathering each Sunday starting next Sunday so that's the 30th of August to uh, be able to meet after the online service about one o'clock uh, at the same field courtesy of Sue and Brian's family uh, and just enjoy a time of being with each other of listening to different stories um, of how people are finding their faith at the moment and over these last months what's encouraged them, what's perhaps been difficult for them. So just a little short, um, not exactly a service, but just a, a, a talking things through. Uh, so that will be part of the of the meeting together. And uh, although COVID restrictions can make it sound a bit um, ominous, the thought of, all, of, of trying to work it all out. Um, as you'll have seen from the photographs, it actually wasn't that strange at all, to be quite honest. It was it was just lovely and there's there's plenty of space um, and we were all able to ad adhere to what we have to do, you know, sort of within um, towns and, and within our interactions with e each other quite, quite easily. So, um, please do try and come on future Sundays. The idea of having it every Sunday is that obviously not everybody's going to be able to come every week, um, but at least you'll know that it, it's on every week, weather permitting. And uh, what, we'll, what we're looking into is that if it uh, is raining, we're looking to see whether perhaps we can use the under um, rooms of Queen Street. Graham's very kindly said that he thinks that we might be able to use that. So that's what we're looking towards. But the field is definite um, and the, the rooms underneath are in the process of working out whether that's feasible or not. But the idea is that we continue with the online services for the moment, but are given the opportunity to meet up with each other um, for food, friendship and a bit of fellowship uh, after the service at one o'clock and who knows we might be able to talk about what um, particularly touched us within services or things of, of how the Lord has been working week by week uh, uh, in each of our lives. So that was notice number one and more or less the only notice there is except for uh, a really big congratulations to all the young people who have had their results this week and last week, so like A-levels and GCSEs, you've all done so brilliantly and you must be really relieved. So we're, we're thrilled for you and we pray that uh, the Lord will guide you in the next steps that you take having uh, reached these particular milestones. So God bless you as you uh, decide what next to do. Well done. And it's strange really, isn't it, how all these things that are going on around us, um, how I was sort of cogitating on the fact that life um, can be a bit, um, sometimes it's really joyful, sometimes it's full of anxieties, sometimes you don't actually know what it's full of, um, but it can, um, it's both good, bad and in, indifferent. And so I was drawn to uh, a passage in Lamentations, Lamentations in, in the Old Testament, which, um, as the title of the book sounds, uh, contains some quite doleful verses and some verses that sort of question what God is doing and, and all of that sort of stuff. But at the same time, it also um, contains within it some absolute nuggets uh, about um, God's faithfulness and care and hope um, and encouragement to each one of us who seek to follow him. Uh, and so as we start this morning's worship, 
um, uh, that is going to, to continue with Laura and her family and Tom Clayton speaking about uh, what is now uh, a very well known numbers blessing. Uh, that's if you didn't know it before. May the Lord bless you and keep you, etc. Um, I thought uh, I'd just say a few verses from Lamentations chapter three to confirm um, who our God is and why we worship him and why we love to just be in his presence and think about him. So Lamentations chapter three, and I can't actually remember which verses, so you might have to go back into the Bible and find them yourself. So it's Lamentations chapter three, and this is what the verses say. The unfailing love of the Lord never ends. By his mercies, we have been kept free from complete destruction. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each day and I will hope in him. So enjoy the rest of the morning service uh, in the knowledge that we do indeed have a hope in God, our Father, our friend and our Saviour. Amen. The Bible reading is taken from the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 24 to 27. The Priestly Blessing The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Amen. Hello everybody and welcome to the Kids Corner for today's Sunday service. As I'm sure you're aware, this week we're doing about the numbers blessing from number chapter 6, which you can see me colouring in on your screen. If you fancy trying out this colouring, uh, get in touch with myself or mum and we'll be able to send the PDF to you. Um, I challenge you to come up with a more coherent colour scheme than I've gone for here. It's a bit of a hodgepodge really. But anyway, I'm just going to read it aloud to you again and I encourage you to read along with me this time and we'll bless each other. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. This is obviously an extract we've been focusing on a lot recently. It's up outside the church and we read it as the children a couple of weeks ago. So we've just got a couple fun little activities for you to try out that'll maybe help you to Remember it, get it lodged in your brain a bit more. So, here you go. Hello again. Uh, I've got a game for you that we're going to have a play now. I know for the previous time we did this, the game was a little bit difficult and went quite quickly. So this one should be more straightforward. I'm going to explain it to you now. I thought it would be funny because the verse talks about may the Lord bless you for us to practice saying bless you to each other. Um, because it's the height of summer, I've got quite bad hay fever at the moment. I've been sneezing a lot. So for today, I recorded every time I sneezed or thought I was going to sneeze and all you have to do is say, bless you, to when I sneeze, and you'll get a point. But if there's a video where I don't sneeze, and you say, bless you, then you'll lose one point. So here you go. Count up as you go, and we'll see how you do. How?
<laughs> no, no, don't, don't need to. Stop. Hey! <coughs> It won't stop because we've got snot on the phone. <coughs> oh! What? Really thought I was going to sneeze then. <coughs> oh! Well, I hope you enjoyed that montage of Tobias sneezing, and hopefully, none of his future employers were tuning in today. Looking at our blessings, here is where we live. Just to put things in perspective, when all goes on around us, when the murmurs and the worries and the frustrations of life are all around, this is what any of us watching this video have just on our doorstep. This is the blessing that God has given us, that we're privileged to have. Hello everybody. We are doing where God blesses and promised to Moses and we live in the UK or you could say we actually live in England but that doesn't matter. Um, and so God blessed not just us but all of his children in all over the world and we have been to Finland Mexico, Cyprus, Romania and Tenerife and my mum has been to Zambia and the Maldives with my dad and um, so we have been blessed and um, so in all different countries we are so blessed that we have a good beach and we are really, really blessed. Where we live, there's lots of, we get all, blessings all the time. And what we do, and, and in other countries, not many people get all those blessings we have. So the one thing we, we do to help them is we have some we sponsor some sponsored children. We've got two girls in El Salvador, one boy in Rwanda, and one in, one boy in 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 Tanzania. The map is also useful for praying at the moment because there's lots of things going on around the world that everybody needs prayer for, like global warming and the COVID pandemic, but also. One that we've been focusing on is the ongoing refugee crisis where people who live in places such as Sudan and Syria where they've been having wars, people have had to leave their countries and they've not had the blessings that we've been given here in England. Um, so one of, the, one of the ways we've been doing so is we've got lots of these maps um, in our porch, which you'd be welcome to come and get one if you wanted to use for prayer yourself. And if you felt able to pop a donation through the letterbox, that would be very uh, gratefully received and would go towards helping the refugees to maybe give them some of the blessings that we've had access to. Um, we have found the South and Georgia, South, and the South South Georgia, Georgia and South Sandwich Island. Island. And really close to it is the Falkland Island. That's quite a funny island. Because it's Sandwich. Falkland. <laughs> and the Sandwich Island. In the last part of the extract, we're reminded of how the Lord turns his face towards us and gives us peace. And one of the ways that we thought could aid you to remember this is by when you have peas in your dinner, you can think about how the Lord has given you peace along with the peas. Uh, we're going to play 
a quick game now that you can try at home, um, which all you need is a plate of peas, frozen will work better, and a straw. Um, I advise a metal straw so you can get more suction on it, and a cup. The aim is to pick up 10 peas with your straw and drop them into the cup. And when you've finished, you need to say, the Lord has given me peace, or peas, whichever you prefer. So here we go. Three, two, one, go. One, one, two, two, three. It's pretty close so far. Eli's just edging it. Have one drop there. Ooh, it was a smaller one, got trapped in the straw almost. Ooh, I think we've got ten there. Let's count them up. One, two, three, One, three, four, three, six, two, four, eight, ten, twelve, ten, good ball, thirteen, fourteen. I mean, great. Good, give me peas, peas. One, two, two all, three all, four, three, four, five all. Six all, seven all, eight all. Stop giving me peas! Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten! Peas. Woo! I remember New Year's Eve very clearly. We had friends round, had some food, something to drink, played some games and watched Craig David performing live from Methodist Central Hall on the TV. Admittedly, it's not quite the night out on the town party that I enjoyed in the days BC before children, but we still had a good time. Social distancing, herd immunity and Chris Whitty were terms that we had never uttered. And Barnard Castle was just a nice place to visit, and not an optometrist's paradise. As 2020 rolled on in, how ignorant I was as to what the year was going to bring with it. Little did we know. Right now, although we have perhaps got through the eye of the storm, we are still working our way through the changes and challenges that 2020 has so forcefully brought about. Just as I reflect on times at the changes of the year, there will of course come a time when I will look back and reflect on the extraordinary times that we are going through now. I will look back and remember government statements to the nation and in Parliament, shutting down schools and businesses, and keeping us at home. I will look back on lockdown birthdays. I will look back on huge uncertainty. I will look back on a time when the church buildings closed their doors and on an Easter season spent at home. I will look back on difficult, emotional times, but also on moments of great joy too. One such moment came in May, watching and listening for the first time to Tim Hughes's The UK Blessing. This song brought together worship leaders from across the country and across Christian denominations, performing in their own homes to sing a blessing over the nation. It has so far had over 3.7 million views on YouTube, and even the Prime Minister described it as a masterpiece. The words of the UK blessing are simple ones that have been used for thousands of years as a prayer of blessing on Jews and Christians alike. The blessing is the same one that was heard by the disciples, by Mary and Joseph, by King David, 
by Ruth and by Moses. The words were given directly by God to Moses and are found in our reading from the book of Numbers right at the start of the Old Testament. The prayer was to be spoken not by Moses but by his brother Aaron and his descendants as the priests of the Israelites. The Israelites had been camped at Mount Sinai for almost a year and were preparing to move off and continue their journey towards the promised land after escaping slavery in Egypt. From this point on, the prayer has been spoken as a blessing to generations of people. I wonder, what do you think of when you think of blessings? I think of my family, my friends, my house, my car. Here, though, comes a blessing not of things, but of words. But these are words that come from God himself. A blessing from God not of worldly things, like homes and cars, but a perfect blessing. Perfect because it comes from God. It covers our mind, body and spirit. It covers heaven and earth. It has no conditions attached to it. The Lord bless you and keep you. As the words ask God to bless us, so it asks God to keep us, to protect us, to keep us safe, to protect the Israelites on their journey and to protect us on ours. But the simple words of this prayer hold something more within them. God is the author of these words and so we can find in them a glimpse of the author, of God himself. Listen again to the words of the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Three times the Lord, or in the Hebrew Yahweh, is repeated. In this blessing the nature of God is revealed. Those who receive this blessing are blessed not simply by God, but by God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Not three lords, but one God in three forms. When we pray, that the Lord will bless us and keep us. It is the father of life and creation himself that we pray to. When we pray that the Lord will make his face to shine upon us, we remember that in Jesus, we encounter an actual, literal face of God in human form. When we ask the Lord to give us his peace, we ask for the Holy Spirit to be at work in our lives, to give us not just peace, but shalom, God's peace. So in this blessing, we have words that come from God and reveal a little of the nature of God. In another well-known prayer that Jesus taught us, we ask God to forgive us our trespasses, our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. In the same way, as God blesses us so richly, may we be a blessing to others. May our words and thoughts and actions offer a blessing of protection, of light and of peace to those around us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.
Shalom Malachem. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Christ himself is our way of peace. Shalom, peace to you, child of the Most High God. Bless you now in the name of the Lord, the Prince of Peace. Thank you to Tom for his teaching today from the Priestly Blessing. And our prayers today will include strategic prayers of hospitality and for the gentleness as a fruit of the Spirit. We'll use Psalm 51 as a response to prayer. I will say, open our lips, Lord. And in your own homes, you might like to respond with, and our mouths will declare your praise. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in help and help in time of need. Almighty God, our protector, we declare our trust in you to carry us through these times of uncertainty. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, to which indeed we were called in one body and are thankful. So let us open our lips and declare our praise with thanksgiving, grateful to the giver. Lord, as we participate in activities of this day, we pray that we do not lose sight of you. Bless us with hearts of gratitude, which are always thankful to you, the giver. Thankful to you, the one who, unlike his gifts, will never fade away. Bless us with hearts of gratitude, which are so filled with thanksgiving that worry and concerns have no room. And bless us with hearts of gratitude, which remember you as the giver, our refuge and portion. Bless us with hearts of gratitude, which cry out thanksgiving and praise, even in the midst of anguish, pain and frustration. Bless us with hearts of gratitude, which are capable of love, hope and peace, despite the tensions, hurts and foolishness of this world. Bless us with hearts of gratitude, which are ever and always yours. Great are you, Lord, and most worthy of all praise. Open our lips, Lord, and our mouths will declare your praise. Almighty God, we thank you for calling us as a church in Berniston to partner with you to make disciples of all nations. Lord, we pray that not only do we bring people to you, but that we keep them in your presence. Let us make your people disciples, not merely acquaintances. We pray that we never become content with our outreach, but continually strive to do better. We ask that you keep our hearts and minds open so that we willingly seek to reach out, reach outside the church to those who do not know you, Lord. We give you thanks for the success of our recent church gathering and we pray a special blessing upon Sue and Brian and the family for their hospitality towards your people. And we pray for further opportunities where we can open our mouths and praise you and glorify you. We pray that we shall find more ways with your grace to break through the barriers so that we do not give up meeting together, but encourage one another all the more as we see the day approaching. Lord, we pray with your Holy Spirit's help that we may be good shepherds to each other, tending to, guiding and spiritually feeding one another. Let our love for each other be evident so that we are recognised as your disciples. Holy Spirit, may we show the fruit of gentleness in all that we do. Father God, we thank you for your just nature. You will not forget the work that we have done and now do in these days and the love that we have shown you as we have helped your people through our hospitality. As we grapple with new ways of being church, help us, Lord, 
to find new ways of offering hospi hospitality to one another. We declare that you will remain at the centre of all that we do in our hearts as a church family at Burniston. As we plan rotors and welcome teams, church picnics and gatherings and organise flowers. Lord, bless our church family needs, that we might be a blessing to others and help us, we pray, to think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Open our lips, Lord, and our mouths will declare your praise. Father, we are soon to face a school year of unknowns, but you promised to instruct and teach us in the way we should go. Please counsel our children and our young people and keep them safe. Give our school administrators wisdom to make impactful decisions and our teachers the energy and creativity and perseverance to teach well in the changing environment. May they seek to create a context that releases the potential of all their students in the challenging times ahead. Lord, you declare in your word, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper and not to harm, plans to give us hope and a future. Lord, we ask that you guide our children and young people to hold on to this truth as they receive their examination results and make decisions now for their future. Open our lips, Lord, and our mouths will declare your praise. O oh Lord, our God, we, who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear this prayer for the people of this country. We have sinned against you. We have acted very corruptly against you and we have failed to keep your commandments. Lord, give us mercy in accordance with your unfailing love. Turn the hearts of our local and national leaders to you and give them the wisdom they desperately need to make decisions to govern justly. Open our lips, Lord, and our mouths will declare your praise. It can be difficult to know how to help people in need. Through prayer, we can seek peace and pursue it. Let us pray for peace for fragile contexts and conflict zones and for children and families living through difficult times. Merciful God, we pray for peace to rule in the hearts of the people of Yemen, Central America, Syria, Southern Sudan, Libya, Iran and countries where there is political instability, Lebanon, Afghanistan and Iraq. Let us also pray a blessing of peace for Jerusalem from Psalm 122, 6. May they prosper that love you. Peace be within you, O Jerusalem. Prince of Peace, we pray for all those who have been forced from their homes as they risk their lives to flee war and poverty, to find a place of peace and safety. May they find safe passage and may God open all our hearts to reach out in comfort and welcome. You, Lord, are our rock and our salvation. Unite us towards a common goal of peace and prosperity for all. Open our lips, Lord, and our mouths will declare your praise. God, our Prince of Peace, we ask you for your presence in the streets and homes of our community. We pray for local police, for their safety and wisdom and compassion in all circumstances. We pray your comfort for those who have experienced violence and we ask your protection for our families, friends and neighbours. We pray for our local community that we might honour each other's dignity and diversity, recognising that all are made in your image. May God grant us courage to challenge prejudice and to seek justice for those who are excluded. We pray for all those who are struggling at this time, who 
you feel alone, depressed, anxious or afraid for the future, grant us all, dear Lord, the inner peace that comes from knowing that you never abandon any of us and love us all, always. Open our lips, Lord, and our mouths will declare your praise. Almighty God, we know that everything is in your sovereign control. We ask that you keep coronavirus from continuing to spread, as everything is possible for you, Lord. Give government your wisdom, we pray, as they make decisions that affect the lives and futures of families, communities, countries and the wider world. We continue to pray for the development of a vaccine and the fair use of resources. Lord, inspire and invigorate the research doctors developing vaccines and help them to identify protocols to eliminate the virus and its spread. We give thanks for the brave volunteers who are trialling these new medicines and we pray for their safety and protection. And we continue to pray for medical staff, key workers and all health workers around the world as they face immense challenges of this pandemic. May God grant them the wisdom, patience and strength as they keep, seek to support and heal others. Open our lips, Lord, and our mouths will declare your praise. We pray for all who are suffering and bereaved. Lord, thank you for being a saviour who walks with us in our pain, who is close to the broken heart and, and doesn't leave those who are crushed in spirit. Let us in a moment of silence lift to the Prince of Peace those known to us that are in need at this time. Lord, we ask that they would fill your everlasting feel your everlasting arms, carrying them through their difficulties, and sense the comfort and peace that only you can bring. Open our lips, Lord and our mouths will declare your praise. Loving Lord, make us channels of your blessing, channels through whom your love and peace and joy flow to others. Prince of Peace, give us the grace to hear your voice, that we may be your hands to bless others. May you guide our feet to places where we can go and be a blessing. Lord, do not let us be silent. You have called us to such a time as this, and apart from you we can do nothing. May our mouths be seasoned with salt so that we may speak words of comfort and encouragement and speak the truth in love. Bind your people together, Lord, as your body. Let us be your hospitality in the world. For from you and through you and to you are all things. Open our lips, Lord, and our mouths will declare your praise. Lord Jesus Christ, Prince of Peace, place your spirit in our hearts, for you alone can guide us to fruitfulness in your kingdom. Make us joyful and glad to be your servants, and bless us with your peace, as we do what you would have us do. May God himself, the God of peace, Sanctify us through and through. May our spirits, souls and bodies be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls us is faithful, and he will do it. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Amen. <laughs> 